Hello, 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 and welcome to... Where I show you combos with endless possibilities. Today we are talking about one of my favorite cards, Possibility Storm. But before we dive into this wacky enchantment, remember to like, sub, comment, and ring that bell. Okay, Possibility Storm is a red enchantment for 3 and 2 red. Whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, that player exiles it. Then exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a card that shares a card type with it. That player may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then they put all cards exiled with Possibility Storm on the bottom of their library in a random order. Now while Possibility Storm seems wacky and chaotic, there are ways to abuse it. The key word on Possibility Storm is cast. You cast the card from your hand, and then you cast the card from your deck. Meaning that Possibility Storm can cause two cast triggers just for playing one card from your hand. So, knowing that, Possibility Storm can fit well with commanders that care about you or your opponents casting spells. Cards like Rorik Thar that deals 6 damage to a player whenever they cast a non-creature spell, or Karavek that says whenever an opponent casts a spell you can deal damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to a creature or player, or niv Mizzet Perun that lets you draw a card whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery. I should note here that players don't have to cast the second card with Possibility Storm. It is a May ability, but if they choose not to, then you effectively just countered their first spell. One commander that can really benefit from the storm is Zada, Hedron Grinder. When you target only her with a spell, you get to copy it for each other creature you control. So you can cast your cantrip spell targeting Zada, have it copy for each other creature, and then you exile the original because of Possibility Storm, and then flip cards until you hit another card, potentially another buff or cantrip that can target solely Zada, allowing you to copy it for all your other creatures again, and letting you draw a ton of cards or getting a beefy team or whatever from all the copies of those two spells. Those are just some of the commanders that do well with P-Storm. Uh, oh, how about we don't call it that again? Uh, moving on, you could just stack your deck full of cards that only care about being cast like the Eldrazi. Cast an Ulamog and exile two permanents, and then flip an Emrakul and take the turn of an opponent. That seems quite good. Or you can just play a commander that looks like an absolutely terrible commander. Mishra, Artificer Prodigy, is a 4-4 four -four for red, blue, black, and 1 and says whenever you cast an artifact spell you may search your graveyard hand and or library for a card with the same name as that spell and put it into play. If you search your deck this way, shuffle it. Well, normally this would be terrible because, well, you only have one of each artifact in your EDH deck, but with Possibility Storm, when you cast an artifact, you put it back into your deck. See where this is going? So you have Mishra and Possibility Storm out, and you cast an artifact like Soul Ring. Both the abilities go on the stack and you decide the order, so make it so the Possibility Storm resolves first. You exile your Soul Ring and flip cards until you hit another artifact card and put that onto the battlefield. Soul Ring and all the other cards go onto the bottom of your deck and now Mishra's trigger resolves and you get to look for your Soul Ring that you just put in your deck and put it onto the battlefield. Two artifact cards for the price of one. You can't get better than that. But even with all this chaos, you can still use Possibility Storm to be a dick. It's not hard to lock people out with this card, even if you don't mean to. Damping Sphere may be the most polite way to do so. It causes players to pay an additional 1 mana to cast that free spell from their deck. But you can be much ruder with an assortment of cards that limit how many spells can be cast in a turn. Rule of Law, Arcane Laboratory, and Eidolana Rhetoric only allow players to cast one spell a turn. Combine this with Possibility Storm means that no one can play spells from their hand. Since the first spell you cast gets exiled with a storm and you can't cast a free one from your deck. Deafening Silence is a bit more reasonable, it only blocks non-creature cards from being played. Curse of Exhaustion is similar, but you get to put it on just one unlucky person that you hate. The tricky part about these cards is that your opponents can lock out the game if they play these cards. You could just be having fun with your Possibility Storm, but if an opponent has one of these cards, they can still cause the lock, since they are universal effects to all players. 
but you can still make one-sided locks with Possibility Storm. Both Little Teferi and Teferi, Mage Zalfir, force your opponents to play spells only at sorcery speed. One part of the definition of sorcery speed is that you can only play these spells when the stack is empty. But during the resolution of Possibility Storm, the trigger remains on the stack while you cast your revealed card. Which means, since the stack is not empty, your opponents are trying to cast a spell not at sorcery speed, which they can't do if you control either of these Teferis. Because of this, they shuffle their first card and all of their cards, including the second card, to the bottom of their library, effectively locking them out of their hand. The same deal happens with the Teferis and Knowledge Pool and Omen Machine. But speaking of Knowledge Pool, this is another neat interaction with Possibility Storm. When Knowledge Pool enters a battlefield, each player exiles the top three cards of their library. Whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, that player exiles it. If the player does, then they may cast another non-land card exiled with Knowledge Pool without paying that card's mana cost. So, say you control both Knowledge Pool and Possibility Storm. You can cast a spell and both trigger, and you stack the trigger so that the pool resolves before the storm. You exile your spell into Knowledge Pool and play a spell for free from the Knowledge Pool. Now, your Possibility Storm resolves, and since the storm doesn't care what happened to that first spell, just that it was cast, you can now flip through your deck until you hit a spell that shares a type with that first spell and play it for free. Again, a nice two for one. It's all good. But, you can get tricky with this. When your opponents cast a spell from their hand, both your cards trigger again. But you control the triggers, so you can reverse the stack and make it so the Possibility Storm triggers first. They exile their card and flip until they hit a second card and play that one. Now, Knowledge Pool resolves. But wait, the first card they cast is now in their deck, and it can't be exiled into Knowledge Pool. Since Knowledge Pool needs that card to be exiled in order to release another card, and since it can't be exiled because it's back in their opponent deck, the trigger fizzles, and your opponents don't get that card from the pool. You get all the cards in the pool to yourself. And those are some crazy, crazy, crazy combos with Possibility Storm. How do you feel about this card? In my opinion, it is an absolute delight, but some people hate it, which is fine. They just need to learn how to have a bit more fun, I suppose. Will you play the Storm now with any of these combos? Let me know, and when you need another possible combo, come back here to Combo Breakdown.